Hello everyone and welcome back to Bridge Builders Academy. This is part three and the last part of the topic, biomedical science in the United States. In the video, we have covered the factors in selecting a college, both for your master's and your PhD, and also the opportunities in the field. So let's hear, and if you have any questions or if you want us to cover any other field which you would want to know more about, do mention it in the comment section below. If you want to really prove something, the best time is do it during your undergrad. Once mm -hmm. you graduated, you don't have any affiliation and nobody takes you. And you can always, it's okay if you really want to pursue uh, research, it's okay to do six months extra, extend your internship. It doesn't yes. matter. Nobody is going to harm you, but you're going to get uh, internship done or uh, volunteer work done at so and so institute. Even your professor would be from the under, undergrad school happy because you're developing a collaboration. Mm -hmm. And there are universities which provide these kind of fellowships for uh, medical and dental students. And I think these days the ICMR is even uh, promoting such things. I think I even shared something related to it because uh, I thought it would be helpful for the undergrads. Correct, correct. So I think in terms don't of ask for six months, don't ask for a month or so, because somebody has to really put time on you. Unless until you are highly motivated, they don't show interest. Yes. And it will also hurt others. Like, for example, uh, okay, they are open to accept you and they accepted and you didn't prove yourself perfect. And it would create a negative, not only on you, anyone coming from your place. Yeah. Uh, they are not doing proper because they say right first impression is the best many people have it so correct I think internship is the right time when you know if you really want to test yourself and see whether you're made for research or not I think that's yeah, when uh, students can actually reach out to these institutions yes yeah. earlier I was mentioning right unless until you take a step you don't know whether you're gaining an opportunity or missing an opportunity it's okay if you're missing it's one among the other misses. But if you're gaining, that's the first step. Correct. So, so uh, yeah. moving ahead with our session, like uh, what are the pointers that you would suggest students should have when they're applying either for a PhD in a college or maybe even for a master's? What are the things that they should look at when they are selecting a college or a university? Uh, coming, coming for a master's, uh, it's more general. Like what is your vision? If I wanted to do stem cells, I need a master's in stem cells. You need to have some foundation. Like later in my life, if I want to do a PhD, I need to know what are stem cells first, right? So do some coursework related to it or look for where there are a lot of stem cell professors. Do mm -hmm. we really want to test? Master's would be best because it's only two years. If you yeah. didn't take the lab, change, move to other profession, like other uh, research field, I would say. Think of a good institute. Don't type or always try for the top notch maybe yeah. we are not possible to reach there if you go for oral biology yes because you already have oral biology as your background it's easy to jump in but if you are trying for something different don't go for two low schools because later in your life if you want to achieve something networking is very important so you need a school where you have a lot of opportunities later in your life if you want to go for an industry, I said you right earlier from a master's, go where there are a lot of companies around that school or in that state. It's easy, right? So mm -hmm. these are the things that are necessary, I would say. And always, uh, for example, uh, GRE earlier for PhD is mandatory. Now I heard there are many schools have been removing it, but still you don't have a lot of publications. You don't have a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. How are you going to prove that I am eligible for it? Get yeah. a good GRE score. Okay. Even though they don't say uh, it is not considered, but they even mention uh, recommended. Yeah. Means they do see it. Why don't you get it? It's an extra amount of work. Because we have a lot of uh, drawbacks in our profile, try to uh, make up for it. it. Yeah. Correct. Absolutely. So these are the things. And coming to PhD, uh, you have to like, uh, there are two types of uh, admits uh, in PhD. One, where you choose a professor mm -hmm. and if they accept, you get an admit. These are done in few schools. 
and in other schools you should get an admit and then search for a professor i was in the second lot where in my school i should get an admit and then search for a professor so that's the reason you have to mandatorily do three rotations you might be liking the first lab but second lab might be even better mm -hmm. so it, it is giving you an opportunity and other thing it also gives you how the lab environment is you're going to stay in for like 5 to 6 years you need to really know how encouraging is the pi how are the lab members and everything if not you can't sustain in a lab right yes. if you have some issues with uh, like few of the students or if it's not possible like all should be like uh, well interacting or something because uh, if you need some chemicals definitely you have to ask somebody else so that kind of a rapport is definitely important so these are the things you test during your rotations okay so when you're applying for a phd school three things i consider first what is your field you have to find out and in that field how many professors are working at least if there are two to three professors of your recommended field then only choose that institute if not don't even consider if you have only one professor and if you don't know if he has funding or not what's the use of even applying you have to go to some other field which you don't are not even interested in and then how to know if a professor has funding mm -hmm. for those profiles few of them advertise okay Okay. Other way, there are some government websites where they publicly uh, publicize. Okay, this professor got this kind of funding in this year. He has funding for this only about the government grants. Okay. Uh, they don't get an insight about the private funding. But mm -hmm. few universities they try to publicize it, right? So they have it on records on their uh, profile page. There are mm -hmm. few in universities which don't update a lot. <laughs> so okay. there are pros and cons. Other way is. NIH PubMed. Okay. Look for the professor's name, and check how many publications he is publishing every year. Mm. If he is publishing, check for his name in corresponding order. That means those papers are from his lab. Okay. If his name is somewhere after, so corresponding order, I think you might be aware of, is the last name. Last name. Yeah. Or the person who the uh, any issues, the email address will be there. So that's how you get to know if he has a lot of corresponding other papers, he has like amazing funding and see for over the years, how he has. And usually LinkedIn and Twitter, Twitter is amazing science community, which many people don't know. Now there are a lot of things, but Twitter is still like, uh, you get to know a lot of these uh, ICMI institutes. They post a lot. Yeah. I did suggest. Another thing I suggest in Twitter, it is not possible, but in LinkedIn, for example, uh, a person wants to connect to me. So when you connect, there is an option called add note. Add in the more. Yeah. I hardly see students. So why should I accept someone whom I don't know? Right. At least you have to justify why you want to connect using that add note. I'm not saying they are rude, but they don't know it. Yes. That's one of the reason I even mentioned in one of my posts, try to do it so that, or if you don't do it and I already connected to you, let your juniors know so that they do it. That's a more polite way of interacting. Correct. That would give you, give a first impression how people do. They send me an invite. I'm pretty active on uh, the group. So, and because I went through a lot of struggle, I usually accept because you never know what kind of uh, reason they had. And they don't even connect to you right away. They don't message you right away. They wait for two to three days and then they message. I, It's a different perspective from the other side. Like every coin has two sides, right? I can't guess what the other side is. But I personally felt if you added a note, that would create a better impression. Yes. Saying, yeah, I'm so and so. I wanted to, I got your contact from so and so. You can mention the reference even. Yes. That, unless until you know the person in uh, like in presence, like you already know him, then you don't need it. But if you don't, obviously, and half of them don't have profile photos because that's how you recognize, right? Or they don't even update their education. Yeah. Why? Right. I, it could be a fake profile. This is a world of a uh, lot of 
spam thing going on around so why should i even hesitate right say, no i can just say no right So these I are the it's still what I face here, or what I have seen over the years is the fact that here medical professionals, you know, the the doctors and the dentists and the other medical alternative medicine that we have, they are not very active on LinkedIn. How many doctor? I mean, like very few doctors are actually active on LinkedIn. It's not even needed for them, right? <laughs> and I don't know why they feel so. I I feel professionally, I think this is one of the best networks. that we have i think the young ones who are aware of linkedin like my batchmates are aware of they do uh, publicize their cases on linkedin for a better outreach so these things are now getting they... it, but the earlier established ones still yeah it's taking time yes correct so uh, this course i think biomedical science since it comes under the science aspect this will lie under stem right the stem course concept that yeah. we have stem yes. course where you have the 1 plus 2 year yes. opt yes so it is not directly a 3 year i don't know if you are aware of it's first one year yes. in that one year you should have a degree mm-hmm. like your degree should be in hand because you have to even provide your diploma copy to the uh, for the extension and you should have a full time job okay full time in the sense you should be working working yeah you should be a, already an employer if you uh, so in opt you are eligible for 3 months of unemployment mm-hmm. and 9 months of employment so in the first 12 months okay. if you don't use the 3 months you can use it in the other other portion okay. other two thirds of the other 24 months point okay. so these are the things yeah stem is one thing uh, that needs to be considered not all institutes have it or yeah even in ap courses uh, few of them accept and few of them don't have mm-hmm. so initial days uh, my friends like it was confusing but now i think uh, everyone mentions about these things because they are of high priority correct correct and you also mentioned uh, regarding the um, the finances right so are there scholarships available or any loans so you have to look for it not all institutes have it so okay. i'll give you my own personal example so in my campus it's a medical and a dental school campus mm-hmm. so graduate program is maybe uh, recently established before i joined in order to make use of that of mm-hmm. the dental and medical school so here most of the students in a batch of uh, 150 or something only three people raised hands for phd one was me other one was the friend whom i say said right is my batchmate and there is another person who traced it most of them were either into the dental school or into the medical school <laughs> so because that creates an opportunity here in us for example the i'm talking about the citizens or settled uh, people mm. here so if they couldn't make after undergrad their uh, medical or dental program they take masters to improve their grades or improve their curriculum towards what can get uh, them a medical uh, admit or a dental admit mm-hmm. so this is how the pursuant happens even similarly for example uh, students from india who wanted to pursue dentistry they go for oral biology health informatics or public health and they make up the board exams and then they get in yes. so if you want to go to research yeah definitely look for institute which also has the undergrads there then you get lot of teaching assistant tips because uh, undergrads need tutors for every course here the study system is slightly different so that will get you paid and uh, simultaneously master students are needed for as uh, lab opportunities are also there where they during summer they get undergrads so okay. i have trained high school kids for research okay. so they are like highly enthusiastic they are like i want to know i want to know Yeah. I'll give you another example I did during my early years of PhD. So there is New York Academy of Sciences, which is like a private organ, like non-profit but not a government organization. So they used to it's a science networking thing. So they used to mentor such students for teaching sixth after school mentoring program, like sixth class kids. I did uh, some. So every day I used to go to New York because I live in Jersey. I used to go to New York. teach them weekly once for one entire semester like 5 to 6 months so i taught them uh, uh, cow eye dissection i taught them few other projects like uh, 
uh, how to isolate DNA from strawberries using simple techniques. They don't use like fancy. So what they do, they mash strawberry, they add some detergent mm -hmm. like solution and that will actually aggregate DNA. So simple techniques, but they understand the concepts. That's very fascinating to them. And I felt like they're, uh, when they get the reward, it was something similar to what I did during my volunteer program in CCMB. It is that kind of uh, a bright smile on your face. Yes. And uh, I can strongly uh, or uh, proudly state, I, I have to, at the end of the semester, I have to make two projects, like make them do two projects. You know, what are the two projects I made them do? One is how to brush <laughs> oral hygiene. And at that point, this happened in 2016 or 17. I showed them how to hand wash technique. Oh. I made them know what is the difference between soap versus ethanol. ethanol. Okay. Because people have the habit of doing sanitization with ethanol. But that's not... Even washing with water is better, I would say. Mm. It get Because it completely washes everything from your hand. Yes. So these were the two projects they presented. That's I amazing. was very happy. And with COVID, I thought like, okay, they had a better knowledge about it. Yes, yes. Yeah, that's my long-term goal is to become an academic researcher in India. Yeah. Because I am not, I actually thought of getting back to dental school, but the avenues are less. Yes. So I am planning to get into, and my dream institute as of now is CCMB which is slightly hard for people like me because of uh, the background and uh, because I don't have any network in India. And okay. you need network in order to get in. It's common everywhere, but mm -hmm. definitely in India because you never know, right? You are a stranger for them and you have to have outstanding publications in yes. order to even qualify. Yeah, correct. So yeah, that is my goal, uh, I was saying. I want to train my own student for a PhD. That's and recently I said, right, a few of the M-Tech students uh, who uh, who had a dental background and did M-Tech, they were facing that issue. I thought like maybe I have to create opportunities for being a physician scientist or a dental who, who has a knowledge on clinics and now doing a hardcore uh, basic science. So people, I, I thought like maybe it is mandatory for me to create opportunities, at least for them. I want to have that on my uh, profile, like accepting students with diverse bag uh, backgrounds who are highly uh, interested because that will encourage students, I felt. Yeah, I think that's correct. Somebody who's who's more inclined would be, a, you know, they would do you better. You have to give them an opportunity. You can't yes. judge by a cover, they say, right? Yes, yes. And okay. unless until you take, you don't know how good the student is. Uh, correct, correct. I think that's amazing. So regarding the opportunities, one is the industry per se opportunity that one can go with. And the other is the in the academics or research area. Are there any other avenues that open up for a biomedical? I think, I think you are aware of, I guess, science communication is one of the big booming thing right now. I know personally half of the PhDs who have moved to science communication. <laughs> so you can become a... Uh, blog writers for companies you can do blog writing even for like uh, publications mm -hmm. right now publications are publicizing crazily yes they need a lot of writers yeah correct and other thing is uh, i don't know if you are aware science art so you see the cover magazines right uh, for nature cell science you get beautiful pictures right not everything can be created in a dish or from research. So they are fantasizing. So now there are like really good uh, websites or platforms where you can draw a near, good hypothetical uh, picture or schematic. Uh, so these yeah. things get onto the cover pages. So okay. these are the other things that are really yeah, correct. Uh, booming right science now. Science art, when you say, I think with the AI tools now that we are having, uh, you can actually ask the AI tool to draw anything. So yeah, we'll get more fascinated uh, cover pages. Sometimes I feel, is it a boon or a thing, kind of, because it can be even misused. Correct. That's, I think that's there if, with every... Every day, right? it should be properly trained to get it uh, a right use of it. Correct, correct. Yeah. So with every advancement, I think this happens. There is a 
advantage or be some control measures yes correct that's there but that is going to come at a very later stage it's just it's just started so they still yeah. they are still also understanding you know how people are using it so yeah correct so another thing i felt like about, because we got this topic is plagiarism yeah. that's one of the thing which we are not entitled like not everyone is aware of it is mainly like just copy paste yes. from a site or something yeah it is good to get an idea but you have to completely so the way of writing is to understand the concept and write in your language what you understood yeah correct that's why when you write a review article you mention the in the author's prospect this is what i feel in my opinion so this is the way of uh, thing so this is very important because because of this they can even be uh, undermined in multiple things in the masters or phd programs correct that plays because uh, for example you have to do a lot of such write ups mm -hmm. and if your writing skills are because we are from where uh, english is not the primary means of communication so it is definitely slightly delayed even though we study in an english medium school obviously you will talk in mother tongue a little bit right correct so these are the things that are needed yeah now since you just talked about plagiarism what are the tools that you can guide if you know if the undergrads today they are they basically write stuff either it is an article or a blog or anything any so usually there might be some google softwares because most of the the professors when they are validating they use uh professional softwares yes. to compare so what they do is they put your thing in so the computer probably uses an ai search or online search sees what are the possibility matches so right. they have a percentage criteria if it is more than certain perce percentage it is called plagiarized correct okay. for example my own article which i published if it is not cited it is plagiarism okay considered it it is not like you should not at least uh, like exactly cut paste it mm -hmm. you can uh, summarize it and then copy it and you have to cite it yeah correct i think you're copying it we ca everyone has to get its uh, their acknowledgement yes yes absolutely especially in basic science it's like years of work absolutely i can understand that but correct so moving ahead like uh, what is your last tip or advice that you could Uh, give to the audience last tip uh, as i mentioned like for phd's uh, like look for the opportunities see for at least two to three options before even jumping in and financially yes make sure your masters is not too expensive so that it would reduce your uh, financial constraints and other thing research is very very less rewarding as i mentioned uh, financial examples and other thing for a drug to come out till then nobody cares yeah i wish there is one day like for example uh, a cine actor or a player entire uh, public audience get attention even if a noble laureate walks nobody even cares because unless until uh, for example i am from uh, cardiac right if i don't know the person is a noble laureate even i can't acknowledge him <laughs> forget about researchers nobody cares doctors are demigods that is another thing but researchers provide access for those demigods demigods i would say correct yes. without research there is no medicine so yeah. uh, that is uh, one of the thing i wanted to work for at least like get some reward my work should get some reward for the community science community i felt really bad for all the covid researchers who were not like acknowledged properly mm -hmm. yeah doctors did their part but definitely researchers also did their part yeah. they also risked their life right they are exposed to all sorts of people right they were also working yeah correct and simultaneously it's not just covid there was the same cardiac there was same cancer everything and still those researches even were done yeah they were, still... were all called also called public uh, essential employees mm -hmm. so yeah definitely these are the things that needs to be considered yes absolutely so thank you so much dr satvik it was a very inspiring uh, you know talk that we had and uh, you opened up uh, uh, branches in this field and 
helped uh, the undergrads and even the postgrads who want to move out and they they want to work into this field. So thank you very much for sharing all the insights. It was amazing talking to you. Thank you. Uh, it is always a great honor because uh, you share your experience and I personally feel even if it reaches to one student, the count changes from zero to one. That's a success. Yes. It need not reach to hundreds, at least one. One, correct. That, that should be great. Yes, absolutely. So thank, thank you. Thank you for the opportunity thank also uh, for creating a, because I personally appreciate all the works done by you and I even uh, mentioned it to some other person whom I crossed. This is the second one I'm doing it actually. Uh, because you guys are creating a, a new platform where these experiences are being recorded. Yes. So any student or the upcoming generations can use these as an example, which we didn't have. Yes. So it's, it's of a great resource for them. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned, even if at least one gets through, that's more than happy, uh, more than enough. And then they can even guide others. Yeah. So that, that that's a great platform you guys are creating at this point. Yeah, sure. Thank you. And Thank you so much. Thank you yeah. for the appreciation. So all you audience, I hope you understood the field of biomedical science and how you can apply for this field, the avenues that this field offers. If you have any questions, any more questions, you can always reach out to Dr. Sathwik. I will mention his LinkedIn profile in the video description. So do check that out. Uh, and before signing off, please subscribe to the channel. It's absolutely free. Like and share this as this might help anyone who's planning to move out and work in the field of biomedical science. So thank you so much, everyone. I will see you in the next video. Until then, bye and good luck.